But on the phone now, we have one of my favourite uh, people uh, in the Wairarapa, uh, Mike Butterick. Uh, Mike is a farmer. Uh, he's uh, on the local board of Federated Farmers and has um, been the candidate for uh, na the National Party in, in the Wairarapa as well. Good morning, Mike. Morning, Tina. How are you? I'm very good. Is it still fine on the Wairarapa side? Oh, yeah, no. Well, dare I say, we could actually do with a little bit of rain, <laughs> quietly. <laughs> I noticed the creek last night was the same the same thing. I thought, oh, it's starting to get a bit low again. Never quite liked that, that time of year when it starts to get really sort of a, a sort of bottom limit. Yeah, well, it's either a feast or a famine, isn't it? A month ago, you know, if you'd asked for more rain, people, you would have washed your mouth out, and it's um, the tap's just literally been turned off. It has. How is that affecting the people who are li likely to want to grow crops? Because... One of the interesting things I noticed the other day is with the floods over in New South Wales and Queensland is that it's literally wiped out a lot of their wheat crops and grain crops. And I know that we get a lot of imported grain from Australia for bread and stuff. So you can sort of see what's going to come. It's going to be higher prices and scarcity of product, uh, yeah, I would yeah. suspect. I don't know just how much of the market is taken up by Australian grain, but I suspect it's a reasonable amount. So what are our farmers yep. looking at here? Yeah, look, you're right, Tina, and, and I guess you overlay um, what's happening in Ukraine, Russia. I mean, they import, they export 27% of the world's grain as well, and um, so obviously the um, you know the volume coming out of there is down significantly. So you throw that in with Aussie as well, and and you know it just uh, reminds us to remember about food security, doesn't it? But look, here in New Zealand, <laughs> and hey, why are we talking about food security, Mike? Tell everyone why we're yeah. talking about food security. <laughs> Oh, food security. I mean, the, the government's latest uh, plan that they've come out with Hiwakari Kanao, well, it's not Hiwakari Kanao anymore. No, it's not. changed significantly. And what it is, it's a map, It's just a plan that mapped out um, a path for economic destruction in Heartland, New Zealand. Yeah. It, it's just crazy. And, and just over top of everything else that the farming sector's having to deal with at the moment, you know, um, all the afforestation and the ETS settings. So is it, um, the, is, a, is it, um, the government, I'm not going to call it Hewaki he Kanawa either. Uh, no. I, I don't know what we could call it. We need a name for it. Um, it's like the government's green shitstorm on farmers, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, well, look, it just feels <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a right that thing. I mean, I, I just, I'm absolutely staggered that any government of New Zealand would come out with a plan that actually shows that one in five, that's 20% of sheep and beef farmers are going to cease to exist. Exactly. And, 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 one in, and one in 20 dairy farmers. I, I just don't get it. And there is, it, a net, there is not a net benefit for the planet. There is a net negative for the planet overall. Oh, look, their, their, their modelling <laughs> shows that that production <laughs> that will be lost here, will, and global emissions will increase by 133%. Yeah, that's crazy And, and then they're going to retrain us. I mean, it's bordering on arrogance, Tina, that they're going to retrain us, all those people that lose their jobs and their livelihoods, and... and they're going to retrain us into the tourism industry, which would be one of the most carbon heaviest footprint, you know, with the heaviest carbon footprint mm. of any industry. I mean, we're celebrating cruise ships coming into New Zealand, and good on them. You know, it's great to have them back. But the reality is each cruise ship has about the carbon footprint of 200,000 cars on our road. Yeah. Yeah, I can and, imagine and that. Just, I never thought about that. I never just, thought of them being big carbon emitters, but I suppose they are. Yeah. But none of it makes any sense whatsoever. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just, people are bewildered. And actually, I think, what I think is really noticeable in the last probably two or three weeks, Tina, is, you know, we're all busy on farm and there's this, been, this suite of policy just coming our way. And it's like we've just done 12 rounds and we've just been delivered the sucker punch at the end. Um, people are angry, they're frustrated, but what there is now, there's a sense of despair that's actually palpable. Yep. People are incredibly worried about their future. And I'm really worried about, um, about people's mental health, about where where are tomorrow's farmers going to come from? Yeah, well, that and was really interesting because I'm got I've got Todd Muller, Muller on later on, and um, one of the things that yep. he said in a recent column is just about that. He says it's the young farmers that are actually the most disillusioned at the moment, and that's a really bad. Yep. That's a sad and a bad thing for this country. So, so, so we've got a meeting in the Wairarapa tomorrow. I think it is, isn't it? Yes. And, yeah, we have, yep. And so right, that's going to tease out some of those yep. issues. And we've also got some problems with Greater Wellington as well, I hear. Oh, look, it, it just keeps coming, Tina. I mean, it's it's actually quite mind-boggling, the stuff that's been thrown at us. I mean, so we've got the one, cha one change uh, with Greater Wellington Regional Council. They don't agree with the, with the emission targets they set in the Zero Carbon Act. 
they want to go harder and faster. I know. They want to turn, they want to turn the wire up into a big carbon sink. I know. And I'm like, I'm just sitting there thinking, you know, the poor old guy that's just moving his sheep beside the main, the main road between Masterton and Carterton, you know, and looking at all this bush and this grass and all the rest of it, he must, and thinking these sheep are really bad for the planet as 16,000 cars a day go past the motorway. Yeah. It it's that's the crazy stuff. Sense. Here's a really good. Here's a really good example. We're like I live in the Rangitumo Valley, great little place. And uh, a couple of weeks yep. ago, someone sent us a thing in the in the mail saying, "Hey, look, we're going to have a, a workshop on um, one of the local streams. Um, it's um, it's a community catchment group that they want to form for the Rangi, uh, for, for Rangitumo. And there's a little stream called the Rangitumo Stream, which runs from the top of the valley through all of the farmland, basically, not through any bush, through the farmland and goes into the, I think it might go into the Kaupuranga first and then into the Real Mahanga. Yeah. So anyway, I wandered down there and it was a really interesting thing. So this little creek has got um, bugger all shelter on either side of it going, running through the valley. Um, it's got a number of houses and lifestyle blocks or properties that it runs through at the top. There is some bush yep. blocks and stuff, and each person on that, lifestylers and farmers, are doing their little bit for their little bit of the, of the creek. So they were yep. doing some testing. The water was just borderline drinkable. Yep. <laughs> and if you looked at it, you go, yeah, nah. I mean, the turbidity in it was, uh, um, turbidity means the cloudiness. It was a bit cloudy. Uh, and I was yep. quite surprised um, that it was actually in pretty good heart. We took two eels out. One, they estimated, was between 50 and 60 years old. And they didn't have the nets down yep. for very long either. And there was lots of macroinvertebrates, which means it was quite healthy. Now, on, this, on the face of it, there's still a lot more you could do for this creek. This absolutely, definitely yep. is. Yep. Um, yep. But here, here's, here's the rub. You know, the, this is a, a creek that everybody is looking after. And it's actually in really good heart, despite the fact that it would, could probably be used on a poster um, for um, some creeks are shit in the country. Uh, yeah. because, and, I, and it really sort of staggered me, it, and it was so heartening to see a group of farmers, lifestyle blockers, and just people yep. who've got houses yep. in the country all working together uh, to to look at how you can test and make sure that the river's healthy and what you can actually yep. do around planting and, and all of that sort of stuff. So, you know, yeah, the look, will's there. We're actually doing the stuff, and it's actually yeah, look, working. A lot of that stuff. Look, Tina, a lot of that stuff's been done and been done for quite some time. I mean, one of the um, statistics that, you know, the public aren't generally aware of, the dairy industry, the dairy farmers have fenced off 34,000 kilometres of uh, waterways. Yeah. There's something like about 99.6% of Category 1 waterways on their farms. Like, to put that in perspective, that's the distance from the North Pole to the South Pole one and a quarter times. Yeah. Yeah, you know it's staggering. In the wire app the other day, we just had the five thousand QE two covenant registered yeah. in New Zealand. Yeah, you know the QE two people have protected about one hundred and ninety thousand hectares. That's like a whole Auckland region. That's right. You know, it's, <laughs> it's pretty significant what people are doing, and, and in a lot of cases, this is uh, money coming out of their back pocket to protect and enhance the environment that they live in. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's pretty crazy, isn't yeah. it? Now, back to this meeting tomorrow, yeah. Mike. Um, do you know where it is? Uh, Farmers yeah, meeting? I, is, it oh, Cop, <laughs> is it the Cop, Cop, Cop Thorn? Thorn Cop Thorn, I think. I think it's at the Cop Thorn. Yeah, between it, two, and, uh, two and four? Yeah, yeah two and four. Um, and on the agenda, I think, is the um, government's uh, climate change green green poop and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. green shower shit. And the one, and the, and the one change. Or, and the one change. What are you one calling it? One change. Yeah. Yes. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, for their regional council plan, yeah. And there's a yep. lot of green councillors on Greater Wellington too. So we're getting all of yep. these green urban councillors who are going to have a big say in our in the wider upper region. And we only have one yep. voice on that council with Adrian. Yep. Uh, and to me, yep. that seems to be a total imbalance around... You know, what the issues that are important to us, I really hope that they listened to those regional communities um, because yes, they're not right, getting the evidence at the moment. You're right. And I think what we've seen is we're applying, they're applying a metropolitan view through yeah. their lens onto our upper landscape. You know, mm. very different values, very different geography, landscape and all the rest of it. And, and dare I say it, there's a fair degree of political ideology being thrown in amongst it all as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, but the problem is we're going to be the brunt of it. 
Absolutely. Hey, Mike, it's, yep. um, I'll let you get back to your farming, um, <laughs> and uh, hopefully there'll be a bit of rain. I don't think there is any forecast, though, for the next week or so, is there? Oh, it might be about oh, maybe next weekend. I've, right. I've never put too much credit on those. I think they put that in there, so we just... Uh, get a bit of hope. Get a bit of, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of hope. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you have a good day, Mike, and uh, thanks for coming on. Good to hear from you.